Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the today's webinar session brought to you by Duolingo and Siksha Study Abroad. This is an informative session on the Duolingo English Proficiency Test for International Higher Education. Before we move further, I would like to introduce our presenter today, Mr. Ross and Ms. Ms. Neha Gupta, who is Senior Development Manager at DET. So I have a request to all the students to keep posting their questions over the Q&A sessions and the students who want to ask the live questions can use the raise hand button and we'll pick your question at the end of the sessions. And now I would request Neha to take over and start the session. Thank you. Thanks, Chandresh. Um, I see people are still joining. Let's just give a minute to them uh, because I keep on, I'm seeing the attendees list are increasing. Um, in the meanwhile, I would like to give a warm welcome to everybody who has joined. And um, uh, as you would have already understood, today's session uh, is about helping you put your best foot forward uh, in your English language test score with Duolingo English test. Um, the few requests for the session. Uh, the objective here is that with my colleague Ross, who's the trainer for the session today, and all of you, we would like to keep the session interactive. Please use, uh, make use of the chat box uh, till the time Ross is presenting, and I will request Ross to take the questions in between. So I will keep on reading the questions, and while Ross will already keep the session interactive, uh, if there are any questions between sections, I will pick it up. So feel free to put all your questions in the chat box. And towards the end, if you have specific question which you would like to ask and uh, and you know have a verbal conversation, we will pick that up. So um, I think we are uh, we are good with attendees right now. Uh, let's move forward. <clears throat> Again, warm welcome from Duolingo English Test to all of you. Um, just a quick introduction on what Duolingo English Test is and why do we exist. Um, I think uh, as an Indian and as somebody who's a huge believer of uh, studying abroad and international education, uh, I, I'm excited to represent Duolingo English Test where we, we have a mission where we feel that everybody should have the right to be able to access their dreams and uh, there should not be any barrier in your aspirations to, uh, to studying whatever you want to study. And that's why we have a fantastic app called Duolingo Language App. And hence we have a product which enables technology for you to be able to put your best foot forward and give your best test uh, when it comes to uh, one of the most important um, qualifications for applying for the uh, for the university you want to study abroad, and that's what the mission uh, that's the mission we are carrying forward, and hence this is the session that we have today. Next slide, please. Thank you, Ross. Um, quick highlights: Why Duolingo English Test? Now, first and foremost, uh, the test is being taken by thousands and, and millions of students across the globe. Um, many of them have gotten closer to their uh, aspirations. Many Indians have gone to UPenn, they have gone to some of the best universities and some of the universities that they really wanted to go in US, UK, Australia, Canada. And I think going back to our mission, uh, we uh, you will find our cost to be extremely competitive, not because uh, we, we are a cheap test. It is because we want to give you access at uh, to be able to take multiple tests, to be able to say, okay, this is a price at which I would maybe want to go for two tests and, and say, see, when do I perform the best? So it costs about $49, which is, um, uh, which is much lesser than uh, 4,000 rupees and, uh, and enables you to put your best foot forward. Um, it has many aspects to it and the sections which DET has, has been developed uh, keeping in mind that how do you as uh, as a student, what are the uh, aspects of English testing that can help you put your best foot forward again? And these are the, the sections which Ross will cover today, what to keep in mind when you're giving the test. Uh, the certified results are available within two days, which also keeps, keeps you ahead of, uh, you know, other uh, uh, dates which you are chasing, for example, you do not have to wait for taking the test. So whenever you feel that I'm ready to give my 
uh, best for the English test or this is the, the university I want to apply to, you can take the test immediately and we give you results in two days, which is uh, really attractive. And as I shared, um, we are we have more than 3,500 schools and colleges across the globe which are on panel and you can share with any number of uh, universities or schools you would like to. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you, Ross. Uh, so the test takes less than 60 minutes. So it is it doesn't give you fatigue. It doesn't give you pressure. Uh, you can take the test from wherever you think you are able to perform best, you know, your bedroom, your drawing room, your uh, your school. Um, so that's that's the best part where you are, you should not feel hostile in the environment where you're giving the test in. Some of us feel uncomfortable that somebody is watching us. Yes, somebody is watching you only when we look at your results and not when you are giving the tests. You get the result in 48 hours, like we, we said. Uh, you can share the results immediately as you get the test and the universities are able to see your performance. Uh, your interview would get recorded on the test on an immediate basis. So uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of YDET, but we just wanted to give you a refresher. And from here, I hand over to Ross, uh, who will help you understand the segments in DET and uh, and maybe will help you perform better in your upcoming test. Over to you, Ross. Thank you so much. Great. No, thank you, Neha. Great. OK, so hopefully you can all hear me. If you can hear me, could you type a one in the in the chat box, just so I know that your microphones are or, or not your microphones. My microphone is working. <laughs> OK. Neha can hear me. Great. OK, thanks. That's great. All right. So the agenda today, very quickly, what I'll show you is firstly, what's in the test. I'll show you the different test questions that there are. I'll show you how the answers that you give in the test get graded. And I'll also give you some tips, some advice on how you can score even better on the test. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right in to the questions. There's three sets of questions. So the first set here is from one to six, and we'll go through these. So uh, these six questions are called read and complete, read and select, listen and select, listen and type, read aloud, and interactive reading. And the most important thing to remember about these answers or these questions is that they're all graded. The whole test is graded by a computer. Earlier, Neha mentioned that the Duolingo English test is much more affordable, lower price than tests like IELTS. I saw someone asked what's the difference, right? Our test is far, far less expensive than that. And one of the reasons is we use AI to compare the answers. So also, with your answers in the test, if your answer isn't completely correct, you can still get some credit. So don't worry if you're not sure about your spelling, it's always better to just try. Okay, so the first question I'm gonna talk to you about is this one called read and complete. Here, you really just have to fill in the blanks. You get a text and you just need to figure out what the gaps are. Important thing to remember with this question is use American English spelling. Okay, so I've got a, an example one here. Maybe you can type in the chat box, what do you think are some of the answers to these questions? So I'll read for you and when there's a blank, maybe you can type in what you think the answer is. So the first sentence is, Minneapolis is a city in Minnesota. It blank, next, blank, St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, does anyone want to uh, guess what you think the, uh, the missing words are here? Great, okay, so I can see you guys are using the question box, not the chat box, that's fine. So that's great, yes, is next to St. Paul, Minnesota, right? And then you can see for many of these uh, prompts, you have here a little, you, you have the beginning of the word, but not the end of the word, right? So for this one, C-A-L blank, 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 you can guess this one is called, right? So those are some of the answers to that. So I think this question is pretty straightforward. The next one is pretty interesting. This is called read and select. You get uh, about 20 or 30 words. 
Some of them are real English words. Some of them are fake. You need to guess which ones you think are, are real, right? So check the ones that are real. The only way really of doing this is to check the, and the words that you know. Okay, ah, I see the chat's disabled, okay. So I've got a little example for you here. This is a real question. Can anyone tell me what, what words here do you know uh, that are real words in English? Anyone want to, uh, to type in, in the question and answer? What are some of the real words that you know that are in here? This is uh, one you get in the test. Great, so two, all oh, right, okay, so you guys are answering the previous question is next to, yeah, but how about for this one, any great astronaut, someone said there, great, any other, oh yes, I see astronaut there, any others that you, uh, that you know, dismay, explicit, tender, gender, that's great, okay, so I'll show you, these are the, the answers to this question, this one is pretty straightforward, right, you just need to select the words in English that you know are real words. The next question is called listen and select, and it's exactly the same as the last one, except instead of seeing the words, you listen to the words. So I won't go into that one in any more detail. Next question is called listen and type, just like a dictation that you might have had in uh, class at school. You'll hear someone saying one or two sentences and you need to type what they hear, what, what you hear. You can hear the same sentence up to three times and you have in total one minute to answer this question. And you'll see this question a lot. You'll see this four to six times in every exam, okay? Every time you do the test. So I've got a little example for you. Hopefully you can hear this. The company employs people throughout the world. Okay, hopefully you heard that. So if we were doing this for real in the test, you could listen to that up to three times. Okay, so that was listen. The company employed. Don't need to hear that again. Okay, so the next question is called read aloud. So in read aloud, it's almost the opposite of listen and speak. You get a sentence. So you'll see a sentence like, uh, like this one here. And all you need to do is read the sentence out loud. This question is very short. You only have 20 seconds to do this and you'll see this again four to six times in the test. My advice for this is first of all, read the question in your head and then hit record, right? But make sure you, you speak fast enough so you can say it all inside 20 seconds, but also speak slowly enough that it what you say is clear. Okay, uh, so let's move on to the next question. So the next one, this is the longest question in the test. This is called the interactive reading. And this question in total is seven or eight minutes long. And you'll see this question twice in the test. And this question has five parts to it, right? Every part, you'll see the same text and you have to answer different questions about the text. So the first part of this question, all you need to do is guess the missing word. So let's look at a quick example here. So this one is, see if you can guess, uh, you can see here there's a multiple choice. So uh, for number one, you can see you can choose from each of these. So maybe you can guess which of these you think is the correct answer. So here we go. I'll just do the first one or two. So it says, there is some something news for monarch butterflies, which are known for their long journeys from Canada to Mexico. So what do you think that would be? Do you think that there is some same news, some of news, some good news, some some news, or some new news? Great. So someone here has guessed some new Oh, sorry, some good news. Yes, absolutely. Some good news for the monarch butterflies. That's absolutely right. So very simple question. All you need to do is guess the words that fill in the blanks. That's the answer to that. And the next part of this question, you'll see the same passage again. So the passage from before is here. There's a new part of the passage down here. 
and you need to select a sentence that goes in between. All right, so here's a, a quick example of that. We have the same uh, topic or the same text from earlier about the monarch butterflies. And this one ends with, they were found, oh, sorry, they found that fewer than one in 10 of them had spent the winter in Mexico. And then the next sentence is, scientists say the number is low, probably because of a lack of milkweed plants where they live, all right? And then you've got a choice of these four, A, B, C, and D, and you have to pick one that fills in the blank. Okay, so does anyone wanna guess? We've got a little bit of time here. Which of these sentences do you think it is? So someone's asked how many speaking questions are there in the test? There are four speaking questions. We'll get to those later, don't worry. But this is, uh, <laughs> this is the writing question at the moment. Anyone wanna guess which of these sentences would go in there? No, that's okay. So I'll tell you, the, the answer was this one, the first one, right? This is the lowest number they've seen in 25 years. And the next question here in the interactive reading you get is about highlighting an answer. So you get a question and find the answer in the text. I know some of you earlier asked about how similar or different the Duolingo English test is compared to IELTS. This I think is a little bit similar. There's an IELTS reading question where you have to say true, false, or it's not, uh, you don't know. It's impossible to tell the answer, right? But this, you actually have to find the answer in the text. So here's a quick example for you. It's what are the monarch butterflies known for? You have to find the right bit in the text and then highlight it like this, right? So here, what are monarch butterflies known for? Monarchs are well known for the long journey they make twice a year, all right? So again, pretty simple. Read the question, find the answer in the text, and then highlight it. Okay, let's move on. So here we've got uh, the next part of the interactive reading. This one is about summarizing the text. So you can see here uh, that, I'll show you the example here. We've been reading about monarch butterflies, and then you have to select one of these three answers, A, B, or C. Uh, for this, so let's call, oh. so the, the first one is the monarch butterfly migrates to Mexico to find milkweed, etc. The second answer to summarize this passage is the Mexican government will introduce monarch butterflies. And the third one is scientists have found a new reserve in Mexico. Okay, so does anyone want to guess A, B, or C? Which of these do you think is the, uh, is the answer? I know someone's asked here, is there a test center in Nepal? Very important with the Duolingo English test. You can take the test anywhere in the world. As long as you have a computer, you can take the test. If you've got a good internet connection, that's all you need to take the test. Great. So someone here has guessed A as the answer for this. Uh, the answer is actually C for this, but that's all right. We, we didn't look at this in great detail. Okay, so let's move on. The last question here, the last part of this for the interactive reading is selecting a title for the passage. All right, so again, you've got this uh, ABCD type thing. We've been talking about these butterflies. So is it favorite plants for butterflies, monarchs near extinction, monarchs reach land, or good news for monarch butterflies? I guess you can probably guess that one pretty easy. That's the last one, D. Good news from monarch butterflies. Okay, so that was questions one to six. So remember here uh, that all these answers are graded uh, automatically by the artificial intelligence by a computer. And even if you're not sure if the answer is correct or not, then you uh, can uh, just try because you'll still get some credit for your answer. Okay, now someone earlier asked about speaking questions. This next section uh, with questions seven to 11 is all speaking and writing questions, okay? So we'll take a quick look here. There's five of these. 
write about the photo and speak about the photo. These are my favorite questions in the test. And then read, then write, read, then speak, and listen, then speak. Okay, so I'll take you through these very quickly now. So, oh, before I do that though, it's important that you know how your answers are graded. So in the dual lit and go English test, we've got seven ways that our questions get graded. IELTS is four, right? Uh, you have fluency, uh, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation. There's seven for Duolingo. I'll tell you these very quickly. There's grammatical accuracy. So that's just, is your grammar correct or not? There's grammatical complexity. Are you using some complicated or complex grammar? Or are you just using very simple sentences? There's lexical sophistication. That means are you using some uh, precise words when you, or, or uh, unusual words, less common words when you speak. There's lexical diversity, which is really how often do you repeat yourself? So try to not repeat yourself. Task relevance. So do you answer the questions in the task? Fluency. So that's how much are you able to say in a short time? And of course, pronunciation. So our Arthi here has asked, will we be able to look back to see if the answer is incorrect? No, you can't look back. But something interesting that the Duolingo English test does is it's adaptive. So that means every time you get a question right, the AI, the, the test will give you a more difficult question. And if you get a question wrong, then the test will next give you an easier question. So you should always feel that the test questions are not too difficult, not too easy, but just right. Okay, so that's uh, something related to your answers being correct or incorrect. Okay, so very quickly, write about the photo. You'll see this question three times in the test. Each time you have one minute to answer the question. And all you need to do is try to describe the picture in some detail. Right, so we've got an, answer, an example here, or we've got uh, a lion, picture of a lion, and you need to describe this, right? So obviously give specific details. You could just say this is a lion, right? But it's a lion, it looks like he's sleeping in the daytime. He looks like he's lying down on some wooden planks, and maybe he's in a zoo, all right? So that's what I would write for this. So you can describe what you can see, but you can also guess at what you think is going on. The next question, speak about the photo, uh, is very similar. You've got a picture, you need to describe it. This, you only see it once, and the time limit for this question is up to one and a half minutes. Okay, so very similar to the last one. Speak, describe the photo, go into some detail, and maybe you can also guess or speculate where the photo was taken. Okay, so next we've got read then write. So here we have a example. So I think this one is, yeah, uh, we've got this, you'll see this once in the test. You get up to five minutes to write your answer, but you'll only see this once. And you get a prompt. So this one here is describe a time you were surprised what happened. And remember, when you answer, try to say, uh, try to make sure that you do all those things we talked about earlier. Use accurate grammar. Try to use some more complex grammar. Uh, use uh, maybe some less common vocabulary. Try to avoid repeating yourself, all those things. Okay, and here is another example of a read then write question. Describe a time you were surprised what happened. So a lot of these are on things like personal experiences that you might have had before. So something that everyone's able to answer. The next one is called read then speak. You'll get this question twice in the test. And you can see here the time limit for this is somewhere between 30 seconds, that's the minimum amount of time you can speak for and one and a half minutes. 
And for this question, I think it's very similar to the IELTS speaking part two. You can see here, you've got a prompt, right? Describe your favorite subject. What is it? Why do you like it? Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so uh, this question, let's take a look at an example here. So this example is, yes, describe your favorite subjects in school. What is it? Why do you like it? How long have you studied it? And why is this important to you? So with these, you can also think for a few seconds before you answer. Remember though, with a Duolingo English test, you can't, you cannot take notes. You have to make sure that you are facing the screen at all times and, and all those kind of things, okay? Otherwise, as someone mentioned earlier, you might end up uh, getting disqualified from the test. Okay, so next we have listen, then speak. This one's a little bit similar to the last one. You get here up to one and a half minutes to answer this question. You'll only see this question once in the test. So again, remember, speak naturally, clearly, try not to repeat yourself and use some different sentence structures. You, of course, can listen to the question up to three times before you answer. So if you hear it the first time, you don't quite get it, that's okay. You can listen again. And you have 20 seconds to prepare before you start. So I will let you hear an example. Hopefully you can hear this. Describe a place that you like to go. Oh, where is it? How do you get there? What do you see there? Okay, hopefully you heard that. So that was describe a place you like to go. What is it? What do you like to do there? And uh, how often do you go there? Okay, so again, with this, you can't take any notes. You have to remember the prompt while you are speaking and answering the question. Describe a place. <laughs> I already heard that. Okay, so here we are again. That was these five questions we had write about the photo speak about the photo, read then write, listen then speak, uh, read then speak. And remember, all of these answers are checked by an AI. The AI, remember, looks at these different aspects of your English, looks at your grammar, is it accurate? Is it sophisticated? Is it complicated? Looks at your vocabulary. So are you using some more unusual English words? Uh, and it looks at, do you repeat your, yourself in terms of your vocabulary? Looks at your pronunciation for the speaking questions. It looks at if you stay on task. So do you stick to the, uh, to the question that you're asked? And it looks at your fluency. How much are you able to say or write in a short period of time? Okay, so on to the last couple of questions here, questions 12 and 13. So these are samples, all right? So these are almost doubly important. We've got the number 12 is the writing sample and 13 is the speaking sample, okay? So these can be seen by the schools that you apply to. So let's say you've applied to a school university in America, they will be able to read your answer to the writing sample and they can watch your video for the speaking sample. All right. So remember that what you write will be seen by real people. Your writing sample is also graded by the AI. So the writing sample answer counts towards your overall score. So if you do well on this, that will increase your overall score. The speaking sample isn't graded, so that doesn't affect your score. But remember, both of them uh, can be seen by the schools that you apply to, right? And schools that you apply to use these to get to know you a bit better. Your English skills. Okay. So here's an example of the writing sample question. You can see you'll only see this question 
once in the test and you have up to five minutes to answer the question. All right. You get 30 seconds beforehand to think, right? My advice with this is, because five minutes is quite a long time in the test, my advice would be write your answer to the question, maybe for the first four minutes, and then spend one minute at the end reading what you wrote and editing it. Now, remember, you can edit the content to make it more interesting for the people who are going to read it at the school that you apply to. But you can also edit it to maybe make the grammar more complex, to remove any mistakes, maybe to add in some more complex, uh, some more uncommon vocabulary, or to replace any times that you've repeated yourself. So you can think of it as a short essay. This one, your, your mark also will be influenced by how you structure your essay. So make sure you structure it like you would do an essay. So here's an example of a question. Uh, agree or disagree with these statements, new technology improve lives, say why. So I wonder, does anyone want to maybe comment in the chat box? Uh, also someone's asked here, if I answer before the time given, can I move forward? So that's a good question. So for all the questions here, you, of course, if you finish early, you usually can't move forward, right? So you usually have to wait until the time is up. Now, a lot of questions have a minimum time and a maximum time. So for example, for the speak about the photo, the minimum time is 30 seconds, okay? So you can't move forward until 30 seconds have passed. The longest is one and a half minutes, okay? So I wonder for this one, just to go back to this writing sample, uh, we've got here, do you agree or disagree with this statement? What do you think? Do, do you agree or disagree with, the, uh, with this? Do you think technology improves people's lives? Maybe you can share an idea with us in the, in the question and answer box. Do you think technology improves lives? Maybe some things you could talk about here. If you said, yes, it does. You might give some personal examples of why that's happened. Usually you might want to start by saying, I agree with the statement or I disagree with the statement and then give some reasons why you agree or disagree. And then also useful at the end to try to summarize what you've said. Okay, so that's the writing sample. And the speaking sample, you also only see this question once. Again, you get between one and three minutes to answer the question. Uh, so the minimum, you have to talk for at least one minute in this. You can choose the topic that you like. Uh, there's usually a choice of two topics there and choose a topic that you're gonna be more interested in, okay? Now remember with this, it's a video recording. So you can see here this picture, this is meant to be the video of the student. So remember that the people in the school you apply to will be able to see that video of you. Okay, so here's an example of a speaking sample question. Who is a person you think you have have had an impact on in your life, life, what impact have you had, right? So you could talk about someone, maybe a friend or a colleague, or maybe a family member, and obviously expand on that. Okay, and then at the end of the test, you get a report. It's very important that you understand how the report is structured, a little bit different from tests like IELTS and TOEFL. You obviously get an overall score, uh, this maximum score you can get in the test is 160. So that would be like getting a nine on IELTS. And like other tests, you get some sub scores. So a breakdown of your score. But unlike other tests, we don't break it down as listening, speaking, reading, and writing. You can see here, we break it down as first of all, literacy. So that's reading and writing combined. Conversation. 
So conversation is listening and speaking together. Comprehension, all right? So that is your reading and listening, right? Your ability to, to get input in English. And production, so like output, that's your writing and speaking. Now, lots of students ask me, oh, which one of these is most important? So no one, <laughs> no one knows the exact the answer to that question, unfortunately, or, or it's a secret. I certainly don't know the answer to that. Okay, so I kind of went through that a bit quicker than expected because I saw we got lots of questions there which were not about the question types. So uh, maybe Niha, do you, do you want to? On, are you on YouTube as well? Do you want to? Pick yes. some questions and we can answer them. <laughs> uh, there are some questions. Uh, sorry, Chandra, Chandrashikar, uh, there are some questions. Yeah. Have, yeah, actually, first of all, we, we are going to pick some of the live questions. People have been raising hand for a while and now let's give them a chance to, you know, present their questions. So I'm going to unmute some of the participants now and they're going to ask you the questions. So, Do you not want to take the questions which are in the chat already? We'll, we'll pick, pick them up after the live questions, after a couple of minutes, okay? So okay. let's uh, unmute the Sainath. And Sainath, if you can hear us, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, hello, good evening, one and all. Everyone, hi. Hi, hi. Please go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I am planning for years here. And uh, so, like, I don't know whether or what type of exams you have to write. Some people say IELTS, some people say autofill, and and recently I'm hearing about Duolingo. But uh, when it comes to Duolingo, in my area, there is like people talking about Duolingo is like many people may not accept, many universities may not accept uh, Duolingo. That is the reason why uh, it's better to write IELTS and all. There are many myths and uh, rumors in the in my friend's circle. So. I want to clear this thing. And first, second thing, uh, people who already wrote Duolingo, they are already, again, they are preparing for IELTS because some consultants are saying that after some days, uh, Duolingo may not accept. Uh, after your writing also, after writing Duolingo also, there will be like a chance of rejections and all. So there are many, th many things uh, talking, like there are many rumors between the people. So I want to just clear uh, till what extent I can uh, clear, uh, clear all my doubts now. Sure, Sainath, uh, Ross, I'll answer that if it's okay with you. Yeah. Uh, so, Sainath, if you will see our website, we have more than 3,500 universities and programs accepting Duolingo across the globe. Um, almost 90% uh, of top 100 universities in the US accept Duolingo. Now, uh, if you will see Duolingo's journey, in last three years, our number of institutions have only been increasing and not reducing anywhere. So, uh, and I'm answering your second part where people have a concern that Duolingo may not be accepted when you will give the, uh, the test or the, um, when you will submit this course, nothing like that. Now, your first question was that, will it be accepted by universities? We have everything transparently on our website. I've been sharing the link on, uh, on the chat and I will share again on the chat. You can go and see the institutions which are, you are planning to, uh, apply for and whether they accept or not and what is the criteria that they have for DET score. <clears throat> Many students also take DET to have a real uh, environment to see what, where do they stand because DET scores are very comparable to IELTS as well. Uh, it is impossible and it's extremely expensive to take, for example, IELTS or any other test twice, uh, but DET being so cheap, if even if, for example, 70% of universities that you're planning to apply accept DET, I would highly encourage take DET, see where you stand. And do you want to, or do you need to improve in certain sections because the other 30% universities accept IELTS or any other test, then use that as another advantage for yourself. So I'm in, in short, your, to your question, DET is not going anywhere. DET is accepted by majority universities. Make use of it. Get your best representation in time at a very subsidized cost. If you still think that there are certain universities you want to apply to, prepare more for those sections which you are which you were not satisfied with your results. Maybe give DET again or then give any other test if you still want to. Does that make sense for you? 
well thank thank you neha for answering that and i guess I, it has answered his question and now i'm going to unmute another participant it's brahman brahman if you can hear us please unmute yourself and present your question Raman, you there with us? He's on mute still. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I guess he is not with us. And let's give chance to some someone else. So, Hail Ahmed. So, so Hail, if you're here with us, please unmute yourself and ask your question. My question is that how long the ballot uh, in Duolingo certificate, and how I can get one hundred fifteen is code. Of Duolingo. Can you repeat the first part again, Suhail? I said, uh, we are no IELTS certificate in barely two years, but I don't know Duolingo certificate how long they bail it, and right. how I can get one hundred twenty score of Duolingo proficiency certificate. Okay, Ross, you want to answer uh, the second part? Uh, Duolingo sure. test is all valid for two years, uh, Suhail. And uh, during that, it's expected that you will apply and submit your scores. I will let Ross answer the second part. Yeah, so I think uh, 115, 120 is about the same as IELTS. I can't remember exactly, around six or 6.5. So yeah, I mean, I, I would say, of, of course, with this, all the usual things to improve your English, listening to TV shows in English, trying to speak to people in English. But I would also recommend that you try the free practice test. So this is one of the nice things about Duolingo. You can go on the website and you can use the practice test for free. I'll give you the link to that at the end of today's webinar. And that, that can help you, um, I think, get the, get the best score possible. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. And thank you, uh, Ross, for handling that. And Neha, now you can pick a couple of the questions from the uh, Q&A sessions as well. So, you know, which are, which have been very common questions asked by the students. Sure. Uh, so Jalpa had a question, how can I boost my score in speaking? Uh, Ross, any suggestion for that? Yeah, so I think with this, you want to just try speaking to people as much as possible in English, but there's a lot of specific things I think you can do with this. So, for example, the Duolingo English test, a lot of the, say, one of the, the speaking questions is describing a photo. So you could find, for example, uh, spot the difference is a fun activity that you can do with a friend where you both look at a picture that's similar with a few differences. You can describe the photo that you each have and try and find the differences. So there's some specific test-based uh, test based things. But I think for speaking, of course, the most important things are, or put it this way, all the people I know with the best English speaking have either uh, lived in a foreign country where they have to speak English all the time, or they love watching American and British TV shows. <laughs> so... I think that's the other thing to try and do. If you can listen to a lot of authentic, realistic English that's in things like TV shows that you enjoy, that you can understand. And I think that's a, a great way for a very uh, low cost to improve your, your speaking. Thanks, Ross. Uh, Neerav had a question. Will we write more than listen to the word in listening and writing section? Will we write more than listen in the listening and writing section? So maybe I can go back and, and share my screen again and, and show this question. So for these ones like listen and write, you are definitely mainly uh, listening. Oh, sorry, you're mainly writing. You're not mainly uh, listening. So just those, uh, oh dear, that didn't work, did it? Okay, sorry about that. The, yeah, for, for these questions, the, the first six questions, right? So um, you're gonna be mainly listening and reading, right? So we've got like reading complete, 
read and select. These ones, there's not very much output. For the other ones that have got speak or write in them, those ones, the only listening or reading in those is just listening to the question or reading the question. So there's not, it's not like you have to read a long passage and talk about it. It's really just you're reading a prompt and then speaking about it or, or writing about it. Thanks, Ras. Um, Aarti had a question. Uh, uh, will we be able to back, go back uh, if we think the answer is incorrect? Uh, did you get my question, Ross? Oh, I can't hear you, Neha. Is that is that my problem? Or, oh. We can hear you. Oh, sorry. Oh, I think my headphones have run out of power. Okay. <laughs> we, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Sorry. I can hear yeah. you now. Sorry. Superb. So, Aarti had a question. Will we be able to go back if we think our answer was wrong in a previous question? <clears throat> Good question. No, you can't go back. So there's only one time in the test where you can see if your answer was correct or incorrect. And that's in the interactive reading, because you keep seeing the same passage again and again, and you will always see the correct answer from the previous part. But uh, no, you can't go back. Of course, if you select something for, say, read and select, and you change your mind, you can unselect it. And for the writing, you can edit what you write. But uh, th those are the only times you can do that. But if you think, oh, I made a mistake five minutes ago, uh, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I think I, I just say this, because remember in the Duolingo English test, the questions are very short. I think over the whole test, you get about 40 questions which is a lot, right? So for the IELTS speaking test, for example, you really only have about five or six questions for the whole test, but we have a lot of questions, which means lots of them are very short. So it's okay, even if you make a mistake in one of them, it's no big deal. And many of the question types, you'll see them about five times in the test. So even if you don't do very well the first time, it's okay, you get a chance again later. Sorry, Neha. No that's great. Uh, I think you answered, uh, Aarti, about the question. Uh, if I, since our uh, test is, um, uh, you know, keeps on improving as uh, as one gives a test, even if we give the answer before time, will it get harder going forward or will it not? I'm sorry, I, I, I missed that. Will it, will it do what going forward? Will it not? get harder? So if you give... Um, the question that Arti had asked earlier. Yeah, great question. So yes, it, it, it will depend. So I think the test almost always starts with easy questions. And then if you do well on those questions, you'll get harder and harder and harder and harder questions, right? And when you start getting questions wrong, it'll give you easier questions. So the idea is you should always feel that the questions are at the right level for you. And it means that everyone who does the test gets different questions, right? No two people will get exactly the same test because it's always guessing what your level is and, and giving you some questions at that, that level. So if you're doing well, yeah, the questions will definitely get harder. And if you're not doing very well, then the questions should get easier. Fantastic. I think we have uh, one person, Chandresh, who's raised the hand. We don't know the name. Yeah, the yeah. I, I'll unmute the person and let's see if he's here with us. Um, the guy with the name of Samsung, <laughs> if you're still there, please unmute yourself and please ask your question. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. We can listen to you. Uh, sir, I've given the exam for the eight times and my test is not certified. Uh, the reason is coming on the mail is you look away from the screen and I go and they check on the Duolingo side. Uh, they said that you have to maintain your eye screen during your eye on the screen. I did the same for the eight times. Still, still I am not getting my certified result. So, any solution for that, sir? Okay, sorry. Let me answer this. So, is your account blocked or? No, no, no. My account is not blocked. My account is not blocked. 
so every time you get uh, so what is happening you, they are not certifying you yes yeah, not certifying my result and the reason of the uh, not qualify my certified is that you look away from the screen that's the only reason i'm getting from the last eight times then you will have to look at the screen ross would you have any suggestion for this yeah well i would just say you need to be very careful about what you do during the test i know a lot of people like me when i'm thinking i often do this right i'll look away i'll look off to the side you can't do that in the think doing english class is obviously fantastic you can do it anywhere anytime but maybe one of the the things that's more strict because of that is that you have to make sure that you're not wearing headphones uh, you keep your head in the you know in the right frame and that you're always looking in the right place you don't get interrupted so i think you just need to be very careful and while you're doing the test you need to think about where am i looking <laughs> right now so you could oh I, i almost like to think of it as i'm speaking to a real person in front of me and that person is in the camera and i'm trying to make eye contact with them the the whole time that's right thanks ross uh, that's the only solution we have right now and uh, please guys remember some of you have written separately as well um the the test involves machine and humans both it is not the machine which is disqualifying uh, consider that if you're sitting in a classroom you may be just asked to go out of the class at the same time here we see that let's try and give as many chances where we say <clears throat> maybe there's a machine error but if a human identifies that you know there were uh, the rules were broken then, then you will be disqualified Uh, chandra is krishna who yeah has... there is one more person krishna so krishna i'm going to unmute you and go ahead with your question hello yeah hi krishna hi neha good evening hi rose i am not sure i think like you were out of india good morning uh i was having two questions simple like uh how similar is duolingo duolingo to ielts are like toefl like the same pattern what i mean like listening reading writing speaking are there like any kind of uh, like there like other kind of different patterns are like i need to take in duolingo well i, I i'm not much of an expert on on toefl i know a bit about ielts because i used to be an ielts examiner a long time ago so i would say some similarities i think one or two of the speaking questions in the duolingo english test are similar to ielts where you get a prompt and you have to speak for you know two or three minutes based on that prompt those are quite similar i think some differences are the reading passages that we have are much shorter right and i think that's great because it reflects usually in real life when we're reading we're reading news articles or maybe not very long text messages and things like that so i think that's a big difference duolingo also has these questions where you're looking up photos and describing them i think those are really fun questions as well and those are also quite different from ielts and toefl but look i would also say that all of these tests aim to measure the same things right that's how good your english is so if you get a good grade in ielts you will also get a good grade in the duolingo english test and the people who made the test have done research on this and they found the grades of people who've done both uh, duolingo and ielts or duolingo and uh, duolingo and toefl so like i say i think overall the most important thing is just how good your english is but i think generally our questions are a little bit shorter and there's more of them and as uh, me and neha have said a few times the test is adaptive as well so uh, you'll get either more difficult questions if you do well or easier questions if you do not so well and obviously for ielts uh, reading or writing that doesn't happen right because it's a it's a paper test so those are some similarities and differences thanks ross for answering that and i guess we are running out of time as well so we are going to take one more live question that is by anish So Anish, if you can hear us, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, Shah. Good evening. Good evening, Paul. 
okay actually i have a question regarding this uh, course i have done my pt and uh, i have seen like there are similar i mean courses a uh, similar sections like pt and i want to ask one question regarding uh, describing the image or has explained i mean uh, describe the picture so is this the, is there are some tricks that we have to use for make it fluent i mean to be fluent and getting good marks over there or is that you have to be accurate i mean while you're describing such kind of images i mean yeah i want to ask yeah. about this you're a great great question so I, I would say for this i don't know about tricks but what I would say is you want to try to describe the image, but beyond a simple description, right? So you can go into detail about what you think is going on in the picture. So like I said, with this example, you know, a bad description would be, I can see a sleeping lion, right? But a good description would be, I can see a lion. It seems to be lying down and it's got its eyes shut from the mane, it looks like a male lion, right? And I, I think this may be in a zoo because I can see the lion is lying down on some wooden slat, something like that, right? So, so I, I guess what I'm saying there is you want to describe the photo in detail, but you can also um, guess or speculate about what's going on in the photo. And remember those seven criteria, right? So there's the grammar, accuracy, and, uh, and complexity, right? How correct your grammar is and how complicated it is. There's vocabulary, right? Are you using unusual, less common vocabulary? And are you using, are you repeating yourself, right? There's pronunciation. Uh, that's important that you can be understood. And then also task relevance. Are you sticking to this photo and describing what's in this photo or are you going off topic and then finally fluency are you able to keep going keep talking and, and say as much as you can in 30 seconds to one minute so that's not really a a, a, a way to cheat but uh, that that's what i would recommend that you do to get a good score on either writing about the photo or speaking about the photo Thank you, Ross, for answering that. And thank you so much. And I guess with this, we come to an end of this session. And Neha, do you have something to share with our participants? So uh, Ross, if you can share the slide, please. So for everybody here, we have a special discount offer uh, for uh, all the participants who <clears throat> have joined the, the session today. Uh, we have a uh, 20% discount. <laughs> Yeah, it's there on the screen and I will put it on the chat box as well. Um, okay. So this voucher, if you use uh, this voucher, you can use till, uh, uh, till 25th June. However, once you buy, you do not have to take the test immediately. You will have 21 days to prepare and take the test. So uh, do make use of it so that uh, you're able to experience DET. And as it is, it's a, it's a very low cost test. And also I wanted to share with all of you that if you want to buy two tests together, it is much cheaper. So while one test is 4,000 rupees, if you buy two tests together, it is less than 6,000 rupees. So that is also a fantastic option. <clears throat> and I wish all of you all the best towards your aspiration to study abroad. And I hope the session was useful for you. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Neha and Ross. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. And I hope you guys had a great session. And thank you guys for, you know, such an informative session of, over the DET. And also to all the students whose questions haven't been answered, our Shiksha team will reach out to you through the email. And the DET team will also reach out to you with this uh, same email ID provided by you. So thank you all the panelists and here we are, we come to an end of the session. Have a good day. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Lovely to meet you all.